in just a few minutes. Let's leverage Particle's wallet as a service, as well as OpenFort, to facilitate completely pop-upless and gasless transactions. AA has major implications across a variety of industries, but one that specifically stands out is gaming. So account abstraction doesn't only facilitate things like gasless transactions or paying for gas fees and other tokens. It represents a fundamental shift in account flexibility across the board. With this comes a really interesting technology called session keys. Session keys essentially give applications narrowly defined, limited access to the authentication of transactions. So let's use an example. Let's say you're playing a game, and in that game, there's some sort of store. You go to the store and you want to buy a weapon. Assuming these weapons are on-chain assets, this would require a signature. Having a wallet pop up for every on-chain action takes people out of gaming experiences, and it limits the degree in which we can implement Web3 without compromising UX. So session keys offer a solution to this. In this example, where you're in a game and going to a shop with weapons in it, a session key, which in this case would have been created when you log into the game would allow you to purchase one of these weapons, all on-chain, without ever having a wallet pop up. Pair this with gasless transactions, and now you don't even know that you're using Web3 in most cases. So specifically today, we're going to learn how to use Particle's wallet as a service to facilitate the creation of a wallet with your Google account that we'll then use to generate an OpenFort account, which then will create a session key, and finally mint an NFT in a way that's completely gasless and pop-up list. So let's jump right into it. Like I mentioned, the application that we'll be building today is going to have four main goals. The first of which is that we'll want to facilitate wallet creation and onboarding with Particle's wallet as a service. From there, we'll want to facilitate the creation of an OpenFort account, or in this case, an OpenFort player. From there, we'll create a session key and finally use that session key to mint a pop-up list and gasless NFT. This application will be separated into a few components. The first will be this main app component right here. We'll also build out components, which will contain some signature logic and some button logic. They'll essentially be a bridge between the application itself and the code that we'll be writing within the API folder, which the core logic for minting the NFT, logging in with OpenFort, and registering a session key. So let's actually go ahead and get started by building out the main app file. So let's start by importing a few base libraries. We can begin with use effect and use state from React. We can also import toast from react-toastify. Additionally, we can do collect button, which will come directly from our components folder. We can do the same for register button. Then we can also import particle network, and we can import particle provider. And then to end the imports off, we can import some CSS from React dash testify. All right, so now with all of our base libraries imported, we can move on to creating the main app component. We can do this in a function named app. From here, we'll need to set up a few global states or variables. We can start with particle, which will go with set particle. We can also define provider and set provider, then player ID. And then finally, we can do show pop-up and set show pop-up. We'll of course need to now go ahead and configure particle network. We can do this by first opening up use effect and we can create a function called init. And in here, we'll need to configure the particle network object that we imported a moment ago. We can save this in a variable called p and set that equal to new particle network. In here, we'll need to set a few main configurations. This will be our product ID, our client key, as well as our app ID. To retrieve these things, let's first head over to the particle dashboard. All right, so I've opened up the particle dashboard. I will click on add new project. I'll name this open for demo and click save. From here, I'll need to create an application. In my case, I'm building a web App. So I can select web, then I'll name this demo app, and I can throw in the domain in which I'm hosting it. All right, so from here, I can copy the project ID, the client key, and the app ID. We can then throw those into environment variables and move on. So with those saved, we can define the project ID as process.env.next public project ID. We can do the same thing for the client key as well as the app ID. And then in this case, because we're just using Particle to create the base wallet that then facilitates the creation of an OpenFort player, we can just leave it at that with the base definition of our project ID, client key, and app ID. We can then close this off just by setting Particle to P. Then we can call init right here and pass in an empty array. All right, so now we've configured our Particle object. Let's move on to creating the logic to actually log in with Google. We can define this in a variable called login. And we can start by checking if Particle is initialized. And if it isn't, then we can return toast.error and say something like not initialized. All right, so assuming particle is defined, we can just very simply call await particle.auth.login and then set our preferred auth type as Google. And then from here, while we're working with the particle object, you can also go ahead and set provider as new particle provider and then pass in particle.auth. Then finally, we can call a function called validate token, which will validate a JSON web token associated with our open for player account. This function is currently undefined, so let's define that right now. We can start by, again, checking if particle is defined, and then if it isn't, we can just return. Assuming particle is defined, let's go ahead and quickly grab the user info of the currently logged in user. We can save this in a variable called user info, and set that equal to particle.auth.getUserInfo. And then we can also quickly open up a variable called toast ID, which will essentially just create a pop-up that lets the user know if our JSON web token is currently being validated. Let's also go ahead and make a post request in a variable called res to slash API slash login. We can also throw in some basic headers, and within those headers, we can fill out our authorization, which in this case will be bear and then user info dot token. Then we can define our body and pass in JSON dot stringify and define user UID as user info dot UUID. This post request contains our entire validation process. And if it works, we'll return a player ID, which 
means that we can then dismiss the validating loading message that we defined a moment ago. As we can now check if it worked or not with res.status and check if that's equal to 200. Then we can set this player variable to await res.json. And then of course we can set our player ID as player. Then we can send toast.success and just indicate something like JWT verified. If it returned anything other than a 200 response code, then we can set provider as null and throw an error that says JWT validation failed. Before we wrap up this file, we'll need to define two quick functions. This will be UI console and logout. Let's start with UI console. This will take an arbitrary number of arguments, which we can set to any. And very simply, we're going to be using UI console later to display large JSON responses, like user info, transaction receipts, stuff like that. So in here, we can define a variable called content and set that equal to json.stringify and pass in either the arguments that it receives or an empty object and then set null and two. Then we can call set show pop up with the truthy or falsy value of content. All right, so with that defined, we can also create a function called logout. This will again, just very simply check if particle is initialized, in which case if it isn't, then we can just return. Otherwise, if it is, so we can just simply set provider to null. All right, so that's all of our logic built out for the app component. We can now just simply open up return. And in here, we can structure all of our JSX and map it to the front end. But as you know, I usually skip this part because it's a little bit redundant. So I'll add this here and then we'll come back. All right, so here we go. We mapped our login function to a corresponding sign in with Google button. Then once the user has signed in, we create this profile card, which displays their name, as well as a button for registering the session key, retrieving their user info, and minting the NFT. So now all we have left to do is export default and an app. All right, so that's all of our logic for the main app component right here. We'll need to go ahead and define the code within the other components. Let's start with the core backend logic within the API folder right here. We'll begin with collect asset. Although before we dive in, let's head over to the OpenFort dashboard and create a new project. All right, so I'm here on my OpenFort dashboard. As you can see, I've already done a little bit of testing myself, but to create that fresh dashboard, let's head up here and click new project. I'll name this demo video and create project. All right, so now that we're in here, we'll need to set up a few different things. Let's start with contract. In here, I can add a contract and I'll name this test NFT. This will be on Polygon Movement by and I'll paste in the address here. From here to set up the gasless transactions, I'll head into gas policies, then I'll click on add policy. From here, I'll also name this something like test policy. Once again, we'll set this as Polygon Mumbai. And in this case, I'll select pay gas for user. Within this policy, we're going to define two different rules. The first, as you can see, is already defined here, will be contract functions. I'll also want to add another rule for account functions. And then I can select save policy. I can start copying all of my environment variables. I'll start with the policy ID. I can also copy the contract ID. And then in here, I'll copy the secret key as well as the publishable key. I can now throw all of these into environment variables variables within my application. All right, so now with all of that defined, we can move on to creating the logic for the NFT minting. I'm going to run through this fairly quickly so that we can make time for everything else. Let's start by importing Axios from Axios. Then we can also import OpenFort and create transaction intent request as well as interaction. And this is coming from at OpenFort slash OpenFort dash node. Let's also start by let's also start by defining our OpenFort master object. We can call this OpenFort then process dot env and next off OpenFort secret key. This will be the secret non-publishable key that we just copied. Let's create our first main function here. This will be called fetch user info, and it'll take user UID, which is a string, and ID token, which is also a string. This function will just very simply be making one request, and it'll be to our particle auth server API. Within the parameters here, we can set JSON RPC to 2.0, ID to zero. We can set method to get user info, and then params to user UID and ID token. We can also set up our basic authentication, which will contain a username and then our password. And then we can just very simply return response.data.result. We can also create our second main function here, which will export and we'll call it handler. It'll just very simply take request and res or response. Let's start by pulling the ID token, which is the token associated with the user account and particle from the authorization headers in the request passed into handle. We can save this in a variable called ID token and set it equal to request.headers.authorization and then do some formatting here. We can also pull the user UID and the player, which will be player ID from request.body. We can pull UUID and wallets from await fetch user info, and then passing in user the UID and ID token. Then we can define another variable called EVM wallet, in which from wallets, we'll pull the EVM chain value from the user info response, which we can do with wallets.find wallet wallet.chain equals EVM chain. And then from here, we can quickly check if the UIDs match. And then if we do, we can define interaction, which will be of type interaction, which we imported from OpenFort. And we'll define three key parameters. The first will be contract, and then we can define the function name. So the name of the function that we want to call in this case, of course, we'll be minting an NFT. So we can do mint, and then we can pass in function args, which in our case will be player ID. And then from here, we can take interaction and open up another variable called create transaction intent request, which will be set equal to create transaction intent request. And then we can define our player as player ID, and then our chain ID, which in this case is going to be 80001. We can set optimistic to true, then we can pass in interaction right here. Finally, we can define our gas policy. And then of course, we can also define our signer or EOA address 
which is external owner address, which will set equal to evm wallet.public address. And then we can take this request for creating a transaction intent and in a variable called transaction intent, we can call intents, and then actually create the create transaction intent request. If it's successful, we can check that right here, in which case if it's true, we can send a 200 response code and then attach some JSON and pass in our transaction intent. All right, and that's all the logic for collect asset. We can quickly move on to login. In this case, we're actually going to open this file the same way that we did the collect asset file. So as you can see here, identical function. We can also, the same as last time, create a handler function. This will start the same way by defining ID token and user UID. Down here, we can make the same fetch user info call, except in this case, we'll also be pulling the Google email as email. And then again, the same as last time, we're going to find EVM wallet. We can again check if UID equals user UID. And if it does, we can start by defining player account address, which will make a call to openfort.players.create. And then in here, we can set the name to the email that we pulled from the user info response, as well as the description to the public address of the EVM wallet. So this call is what's basically creating the Openfort player. We can check if that was successful and throw a 200 value over to the response. And then as you can see, it's pretty simple. Let's move on to defining our session registration. As you can see, I went ahead and opened it up with the same entry as the last two files, as we're just defining open for it, as well as fetch user info. For this one, we can also create handler. And then in here, we can start by pulling our authorization from request.headers. We can also pull our user UID, session pub key, and player, which is assigned to player ID from request.body. From here, we can import the same logic as the last two files in pulling the token, the UUID, and the wallet. And then with all of these defined, we can open up another conditional. And then in here, we can start the process of creating our session key. We can do this in a variable called create session request, which we can map to create player session request. We can fill in player ID, set address to session pub key, set the chain ID to 8001. We can define valid until and throw in this integer right here, and then also define valid after and do zero. We can throw in our gas policy as well as our EOA address. Then we can make this request request in a variable called player session and set that equal to await open for dot players dot create session and then throw in create session request. Then as the same as last time, we can throw in some response handling right here. That's all of our logic complete for the session key registration. Let's move on to our components folder. I'm going to leave this evm.ethers.typescript as defined. It's just exporting an Ethereum RPC class while also leveraging the provider object from Particle Connect. All right, so let's start with our register session button. We can begin by importing a few base libraries such as React and use state. We can also import open fork as well as toast. And then finally, we can import RPC from evm.ethers. And then let's go ahead and create our main register button component. This will take provider, particle, UI console, logout, and player ID. We can first set a global state, in this case, loading and set load. Let's begin by opening up a function called handle reg or handle register. We can define open for response, toast ID, and auth within particle.auth.get user info. We can then check if provider is defined, and if it's not, we can just return. Let's start by calling open create session key. And then following that, we can do await open save session key. Then in tandem with this, we'll need to call the register session function from register session. But before we do that, let's redefine toast ID as toast.loading and then pass in a register. Now we can go ahead and make our main call to the register session API. We can save this in a variable called response. This will of course be a post request. We can throw in some basic header and set our authorization off token. Finally within the body we can do json.stringify and pass in user UID which will be auth.uuid. We can also pass in session pub key, which will be open session key address. Then we can also pass in player map to player ID. Then we can save the response in a variable called JSON and set that equal to await res.json. Then from here, we can simply open up a conditional, check if json.data.next action is defined or returns true, in which case we can define RPC as new RPC and then pass in provider. Finally, we can send a signature request to confirm the creation of a session key. We can save this in a variable called open for response. We already defined this above, so we're just redefining that right now. And that'll be set equal to await open send signature session request. And we can pass in JSON dot data dot id then await rpc dot sign message and we'll have the provider in this case the particle provider sign json dot data dot next action dot payload dot user op hash this will be a user operation that we're signing and pushing to the network then we can check if open for response is truthy in which case we can throw a successful notification and then i also throw in some error handling a call to our ui console function set load to false finally i'm returning a button that either says register session or registering depending on if set load is set to true or false all right we're almost done this is the last component of our application here. This will be the button for the NFT minting. We can call this collect button and it'll take provider, particle, UI console, logout, 
and player ID. Similar to the last function, we can set collect loading and set collect loading to use state and pass in false. From here, we can create a function called handle collect button click. And then in here, we can open up open for it transaction response and just leave it undefined for now. Then per usual, we can check if provider is defined. If not, then we can just return. Otherwise, we can define user info, which we set equal to particle.auth.get user info. Then similar to the last example, we can set a quick toast.loading. We can now make a request to our collect asset API endpoint. Then we can define data from await response.json. Then of course we can dismiss the toast collecting item notification that we spun up a moment ago. We can quickly check if data.next action. If this resolves to false, then we can set toast.error and say something like JWT verification failed. Then we can just return await and then our logout function. All right, so now we can actually go ahead and push the transaction through. Let's start by creating a variable called payload. This will just very simply be data.next action dot payload dot user op hash. Then we can create a boolean called session key loaded, which we can set equal to await open for dot load session key. Then we can use the session key loaded variable within signed transaction by defining signed transaction conditionally based upon if session key loaded returns true, in which case we can do open for it dot sign message payload. Otherwise we can do await new RPC then pass in provider then do dot sign message payload. And then in a similar fashion we can redefine toast ID as toast.loading. And then depending whether session key loaded returns true or false, we can say session key waiting for signature or owner key waiting for signature. Now finally we can define open for transaction response with await open for dot send signature transaction intent request. That'll take data.id and signed transaction. And then I also went ahead and added some handling for success, sending the transaction response to our UI console and returning the button that has conditional text based upon the status of the mint. And alright, that's it. We just finished building the application. Let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. And there you go. All right, so let's try the sign in with Google button right here. As you can see, I have all my Google accounts. I'll select this one and there we go. Now I'm all logged in. We have the three buttons we made. Let's start by registering a session key. As you can see, it's currently in the process of building this for us. And we can go ahead and sign this right here. Then there we go. As you can see, we have a pop-up with all the information about the session key. And now that we have the session key registered, we can mint the NFT. Although first I want to test get user info. And as you can see, we have all my user information right here. Okay, so now that we know that both our session registration and our user information retrieval works, let's go ahead and mint the NFT. The session key is currently assigning that transaction. And there we go. It was successful. We have all the information right here. If you'd like to learn more about Particle Network, then I'll have a full introduction to Particle Network video linked below. Additionally, if you'd like to give Particle a try hands-on, then I'll also have our web demo linked below.